Hey y'all, this is A.L. Thick Madame and this is the recap review for Pose. So before I get into this recap review, y'all, I'm sorry. Y'all got to look at the curls, honey. Look at them. This is day six and a half, honey. Day six and a half and I have not added any more product to my hair. I do like a freshener, which I really don't even have to do. I, well, I'm probably saying it wrong. It's some kind of a mist. But um, there is a black-owned business that I will be putting a spotlight on before the end of this month that I will show y'all what it's hidden for. Because it's like, this don't make no sense because my hair don't normally stay like this. Normally, if I go to sleep, whether I'm wearing some on my head or not, my hair gonna look like trash. It's gonna become flat. And even if I try to fluff it up, it's gonna look like trash. Oh no, it's the complete opposite with this. I can sleep directly on my hair and it is amazing. When I wake up, I do like this and it's back. And it's back to life, back to reality as if nothing has ever happened. But anyway, I cannot wait to get into that with y'all. But first of all, let's go on ahead and get into this recap review for Pose. Y'all, this episode is, it, it had some moments where it was very, very uh, touching, very emotional and everything else in between because a lot uh, was unpacked. I texted one of my friends because I knew she hadn't watched it yet and I told her, I was like, yeah, go ahead and have you something to drink on standby because yeah. And so she was just like, oh Lord. I was like, yeah, go ahead and do that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into the episode, honey. So the episode starts out and we see Pray Tell trying to sleep. Apparently he has been trying to sleep and has not been able to sleep throughout the night for the last few weeks. And he is usually awakened out of his sleep because he is drenched in his own sweat, dying, no matter the about the fact that he actually has a box fan in the window and he should be pretty cool. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm telling you, he'll wake up in the middle of the night, change the bedding and his clothes, get back in the bed, and it happens all over again, at least twice a night. And as soon as, you know, like the second time they showed it, I was like, oh Lord, okay, the, 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 you know, everything is really kicking in now. It's kicking it into high gear now with him having AIDS. So he finally, you know, a situation happened that prompted him to go on ahead and go to the doctor. He got up one night, one of those nights when all this was going on, and he ended up having this big, like, knot on his arm. And I was just like, please tell me that this is not cancer. Of all things, please tell me that this is not cancer. What is happening here? And, you know, a lot of y'all who've been with me for a while, y'all know I have cancer. I still have my moments where I want to tell y'all my uh, complete story. But whenever I record it, I never get up the nerve to put it out there. And y'all know some very, very detailed things about me about me being raped and molested and all that stuff. But I don't know what it is. I think one day I will be able to muster up the strength to do it. But it just ain't going to be today. So, yeah, y'all. Anyway, he ends up feeling... And, I mean, it was huge. I was like, oh, my gosh, no. So, despite everything that has been going on between Pray Tell and the nurse, he went to the, you know, hospital and, you know... They, I guess they did a biopsy of it because it was huge, y'all. I was like, oh, no. Like, as soon as I saw that, my heart sank because I was like, Lord, please don't let this be cancer. Blanca's there. And, you know, of course, she's there for moral support. And old girl, despite everything that she and Praytel has been going through, having their little fallout and all that, no matter what, she always going to be there for him. So the doctor comes in. And wants to tell him the news. And so he was like, no, I want them to stay. So he ends up telling him that it is cancer. I think he said it's um, 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 I don't know why I was about to say something else. Uh, I don't know why I can't think of what it is, y'all. What is wrong with me? But anyway, uh, I'll think about it in a minute. So he ends up finding out that it is cancer. And so... You know, everybody's in disbelief. You know, Blanca was already super duper nervous and shaking a leg and all that other stuff. And so he was like, okay, well, doc, how long do I have to live? And he was like, you know, at the most six months. 
So everybody tired in their spirit. And I'm just like, nah, bruh. Why can't I think of the kind of cancer he had? I don't know what is going on. And I've had clients in the past who've had that particular type of cancer. But it wasn't AIDS related. Oh my gosh. Why can't I think of it? it starts with an L? I don't know what's wrong with me, y'all. But um, if I think about it, I'll just, you know, put the words across there. Um, but yeah, and if I don't, y'all put it down in the comment section if I don't do it first. So anyway, he basically, you know, was like, okay, well, I have a lot of people who I need to make amends with, so I'm going to do that. And, you know, he was just like, you know, trying to let everybody know he's going to live his life. So he ends up taking a trip to Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken. And so I'm like, what's in Pittsburgh, honey? So he ended up going to Pittsburgh by bus. It's 1994. So anyway, just making sure. And then y'all know he in New York. And most people in New York, they tend to not have vehicles. And they don't see the point, And they will walk, walk for blocks, many, many blocks. And take trains and all the other stuff. So yeah. Um, so despite the fact that it's 1994, it's New York. So yeah. Um, so he arrives and I'm like, okay, what's in Pittsburgh though? So he gets to this neighborhood. It looks very familiar to him. He sees these children playing and skipping rope. And then he is immediately reminded of back in the day when he used to jump rope. And you could even, you could tell without them even, you know, having to tell us like, oh, this is a young prey tale. And he was envisioning himself, um, playing, you know, with jump rope and all this other stuff, people twirling the rope. Y'all, I, I miss those days when I used to, you know, jump rope with my cousins. It's so sad. But anyway, so then, you know, he kind of gets snapped out of this moment that he's in because who, he, who did he go to see? He's at his mama's house. And guess who his mama is? Anna, is it Anna Marie or Anna Maria Horsford? Who... A lot of people know mainly from, I'm going to say two shows, Amen as Thelma and the security guard off of the Wayans Brothers, that TV show. So yeah, she's the one playing his mama. So she was excited to see him and was like, you want something to eat? You look good. I'm inviting, you know, who, do, who these people are. I, I, I don't remember if she was saying that they were her sisters or if they were her friends, just people she knew from church or if it was a variety of all because there are people who are related to people and they are, you know, they deem themselves to be friends. My mama is best friends with her sister. It just is what it is. They talk to each other every single day, at least once a day, like in-depth conversations. And I'm like, how do y'all have something to talk about? Like, but anyway, I mean, they would be doing that. I'm like, how you have so much to talk about? But it is what it is. So anyway, she told me she gonna go ahead and cook some catfish. Y'all, I was like, I got excited because I'm like, okay, I love a good clean catfish, honey. So I was like, all right then, y'all. I was so disappointed. So the ladies came over and the ladies being uh, Jack A. Harry and um, Janet Huber, Huber, who y'all know everybody loves to call her the original Aunt Viv and all that other stuff. And so, child, I was so disappointed in that catfish. Look here, I'm sorry. I'm used to catfish actually having a golden brown or a hard fried, you know, exterior to where there was some color on it. It looked like that catfish was taken out the pack or came straight out the water and was gutted and deboned and... It just came straight up out the grease looking the exact same way. I don't know what is going on. Maybe it's because they in Pittsburgh and they don't understand that that ain't how it look. I don't, it just didn't even look like it was cooked all the way. I was like, what is going on? And where's the seasoning? And where's the batter? And how hot is the grease? Because the grease ain't hot enough or something ain't right. I don't know. But they was trying to set it off like the catfish was everything, y'all. I was so disappointed. I'm sorry. I digress, y'all. I, I, I haven't been really eating meat like that and I'm trying to completely stop again because meat is terrible for us but you know I'm not going to try to tell y'all how to live y'all life I'm just saying for me as for me and myself <laughs> I, I know what it is and I'm good on that I don't have to have meat but y'all I was so tired I was like what is wrong with this this is not catfish y'all anyway so tired of my spirit and so they are wondering, you know, why is he there? They haven't seen him in a long time. It's been 25 years. I was like, Lord, have I, 25 years? 
25 years since you last seen your mama. Now, I mean, I might be, I, 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 look at me. I ain't been home since 2015, but I have extenuating circumstances as to why that happened. And my plan was to go back in 2017 and then my grandmama passed away like a month after I just promised her I was coming home because that was my plan anyway. Y'all, the most been popping off then COVID and it's just like everything just been happening, but it is what it is. I'm going to go see them uh, very soon. I'm trying to see if I can do something this year. I'm not sure, but uh, the way these people be acting on these planes and I already don't like flying as it is, I ain't got time and I really don't want to drive y'all. It's nine to 12 hours one way. I just, ugh. so anyway, I'm going to make it happen. I don't know how, but I'm going to make it happen. So anyway, they want to know what brings him into town because he ain't been there in 25 years. And so, you know, they're trying to get a feel for how everything been going with him. How's New York and all that. So he was like, oh, it's great. It's good. So they're looking like, okay, no, uh, what, what, what else is going on though? What, what's, what's going on? Oh, oh, okay. And he ain't really saying nothing. So eventually he lets them know that he does not have much time to live and that he is dying. He has cancer. He has AIDS. First of all, they never even knew that he had HIV and eventually it, you know, it went into, you know, AIDS. He had HIV for six years. So they were getting blow after blow. You know what I'm saying? His mama looked like she about to have a heart attack any minute. The woman who, you know, the 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 uh, Aunt Viv, as people like to call her, the original Aunt Viv, she is very, very paper Bible by the book. And, you know, his mama is in her feelings and I get it. And like, she can't even really take it right now. And so the woman, you know, Aunt Viv, she, she doing a mo. She was like, she was trying to read him and was like, oh, well, homosexuality ain't the way it's supposed to be anyway. And then she going to read Jack A. Harry's um, character because she got divorced. And so. Right now, she's the only one who's really all the way here for him because she had to read her. She was like, how dare you? You didn't even have my back when I got divorced. And the church really tried to come for her. Well, they did come for her and tried to make her feel terrible about her decision to get divorced. Apparently, she needed to be divorced from whoever this raggedy man was. So, um, yeah, it's some more skeletons that are going to come out. But just know a whole lot was going down. His mama is in her feelings. And Jack A. Harry's character goes after her to check on her because she, you know, is really taken aback. I already ain't seen you for 25 years, honey. And then you go come and then you tell me you ain't got but six months to live. What is we talking about? What is we talking about? So, you know, and I don't think he has any more siblings because I don't ever hear him talk about no siblings now. If he does, I don't forget because this is what, episode, season what? Three, four, five, three. So, yeah, y'all. Um... But the woman who is Aunt Viv's character, she done got up like, well, but you know, yep, it is what it is. I'm about to go down to the church house. About to go to, down to the church house. And I got some solos and things to help work on. And then she going to ask him to go with her. Basically was, was saying it like, okay, uh, we got somewhere to go. And he looking like, where? Child, he was like, yeah, I ain't really trying to do all that. And so <laughs> she was like, well, you might be interested to find out that, that somebody that you used to know is the pastor down at the church now. And so it's this man named Vernon. So if I'm, if I'm not correct, if I'm not uh, mistaken, it's Vernon. So he just said it off. He was just like, Vernon, of all people. And so she was like, look, it is what it is. And everybody living for him being a pastor. So I thought, okay, whatever. So they go to the church. So I hear all this good singing and, you know, it's just a, a, a like a uh, rehearsal for the person who's playing the piano and the soloist and the person who's going to direct them, who is Aunt Viv's character. And so they did a Zoom and I said, I know that's not Lettuce. Lettuce has been setting it off on all the different movies and the television shows. I was like, yes, ma'am. So um, I forgot what song it is, but I never knew that song like that. But I always hear it and I should just learn it. Like, I should at this point because I hear it so much. But anyway, they were singing all the way down. I was like, y'all better do that. Pray tell, got his entire life. And so 
nobody else right now knows he's in town. So the pastor came in and so he saw Pray Tell from the back. And so as soon as I heard about old boy, when they was at the house, I was like, let me find out Pray Tell and did something, kiss this man, had sex with him or something back in the day. And now he the pastor hiding in plain sight. Is this what we doing? Is this really what we finna do? This man saw him. I'm talking about he saw him from the back. He saw him from the back, honey. I was just like, you done went off from seeing Pray Tell from the back. He was looking like, wait a minute, baby. I know that ain't who I think it is. So he sat like a row or two back from Pray Tell. And when the people was done rehearsing, of course, Pray Tell got his life. So he clapping. And so he heard extra clapping in the background. And so he looked back and was like, oh, wait a minute now. And... You know what I'm saying? I was just like, Lord, okay, y'all is doing a whole lot of your life. And y'all, I can't. So uh, back in the day, pray tell, he used to be very into the church and he could sing down. I, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but he actually uh, had a singing career uh, years and years ago. Uh, but I think the acting and, you know, theater and all that stuff took over more so, even though you can still have all of that going well into that type of career anyway. It all can just intertwine anyway. So, you know, he, I'm talking about like he had albums and all that other stuff. So, yeah, y'all. So, you know, it was just what he used to do back in the day. People used to live for him singing all of that. So, everybody leave out the room and Pray Tell and him had a little moment. And so, he was like, oh, I can't believe that, you know, you are a pastor of all people. And so he over here trying to get him like the little holy speech. And so pray tell ain't really trying to hear that. So he was like, well, um, and I mean, he basically bust his bubble because nobody was in the room. And he was just like, I mean, you know what it used to be back in the day. So why are you trying to act like you don't know what it is? So he was like, did you come here to see me? And he was like, I mean, look, all you need to know is I'm not going to be here for much longer. And... So he trying to tell him the news. And he was like, what you mean? He was like, you know exactly what I'm dying from. And like walked off. So, you know, eventually he invited him over to his house. And the person who he ended up marrying was Pray Tell's best friend in high school. Some girl. And I mean, you can tell when you see her, you can tell, oh, okay, yeah. Somebody like Pray Tell, a gay man like Pray Tell would have a best friend like her that looks like her. I already knew. I was waiting. I said, I can't wait to see what she looked like. Because I bet she's going to be, be you know, what people consider to be everything. I, I already knew. So, anyway, <laughs> he went back to the house and he talking to his mama. And, you know, y'all, some real stuff started coming out. I was tired in my spirit because um, I was really hoping that it was not going to go down this road. I was really hoping that it wasn't, but it did. So, he was talking to his mama. And she's thinking that he's coming back to like possibly stir up some more stuff. And it's like, why would you think somebody gonna stir up anything just because they came back to the house to see people and all this? She was like, is this really why you came? You came to see him? I was like, Lord. And so she was like, people can change, whatever, whatever. And so like, I was like, I wouldn't have thought that his mama knew nothing about none of this stuff. So anyway... You know, I think that the people, like the most of the congregation can't know because if they did, I don't think they would be up in there because you know how hypocritical a lot of people who are in the church can be. Well, he was like, well, he invited me to come over to the house. I might go over there. So she was like, don't go start no trouble. So they showed like a flashback to back in the day where him and Vernon was walking from church together. And before they even left the building, he was just, Vernon told him, you're my favorite singer. They set it off and then they, they embraced and kissed each other and his mama saw it. And I was just like, why is we still in the church and, and doing this in plain sight, sir? Oh my gosh, fuck okay. yeah. It was a mess. I was like, sir, y'all done did the most. So anyway, eventually, uh, Pray Tell ends up at the house. He meets this man, his wife, and his kids. And they're playing these biblical games where you guess... Um, well, I guess the daddy or whoever throws out of a, a, a chapter and all that, and you got to, you know, actually recite what it is. And so the children are very, very delightful and they're very smart and all that good stuff. And it's very awkward. Um, Vernon 
he gets excited when he's talking to pray tell. And I'm like, I'm gonna need for you to have the same excitement for your children and your wife. Y'all, he gets a phone call and the wife was like, you know, this is our family time. And so he was like, I'm sorry, I got to take this. So he took the phone call on the phone, the house phone, because 1994, um, a lot of stuff ain't happening for everybody right then. So yeah, takes a phone call. One of the members is actively passing in that moment. So he has to go pray over the body and do all this other stuff. These are things that a lot of pastors do. Sick and shut in. Pretty sure this person was on the sick and shut in list. And so he was like, this should not take that long. Pray tell that you're going to be here when I get back. So he was like, uh, maybe like he doing the most. I'm looking like, why are you setting it off? You ain't say you ain't ask your wife if your wife going to be up by the time you get back. Cause it ain't going to take, but like, it's probably going to be an hour or less and you'll be back at the house. You ask your pray tell if he going to still be at the house. And it was already nighttime then. I was like, you did the most. So anyway, he done pulled back up. Pray tell is out on the porch smoking a cigarette. And, you know, he was like, oh, pray tell you're still here. And so he was like, yeah. So he was like, you know, it's a nice night. You know, let's take a walk. So they end up walking and then they end up in this park. And y'all, this man to set it off. He going to tell pray tell, you got me feeling a way I haven't felt in a long time. You have reawakened something inside of me. And I was just like, sir, uh, what is going on here? Pray tell. Pray tell said, fix it, Jesus. Now, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but pray tell, even though he grew up in the church, he ain't here for church folks because church folks be trying him. And within the conversation that was going on with his mom, I got sidetracked, my bad, y'all. Um, we learned that his stepfather, uh, his, pa his father passed away, but his mama wanted to keep up appearances and felt like he needed a father figure and the dude was trash, to say the least, and then some. But anyway... Um, the dude she ended up marrying was his stepfather, and he was doing very inappropriate things to him, sexually molesting and abusing him and all of that. And he told his mama about it, and she still dealt with that man. And I'm just like, girl, what's wrong with you? Pray tell and set it off and was like, I told you this is what was happening. And so she was like, I know, but I still needed him. He was a good role model for you. And I'm like, where? Uh, where is this a good role model? Where is this person showing him how he going to be a man or any of these other things by being disrespectful to you and being trash to him? Like, I don't, I don't understand. What is people's fascination with children? I don't get it anyway. But yeah, he had sexually molested him and he had to read her. It was like, y'all, the church people, y'all condemned me. Y'all basically put me in y'all's own personal hell. I feel like the reason why I even got AIDS, HIV and AIDS is because of y'all. Y'all always told me that I'm going to be cursed and never that I would be blessed. I feel like y'all were the reason why all this stuff happened to me. Oh child, it was just a lot. And so she really was trying to defend this man. And I was just, I want to slap her through the TV. Like what is wrong with you? So anyway, Y'all, later on, after he got home from having these moments with Vernon, because, yeah, kissing and things then went down. And Pray Tell told this man, like, the entire story of him actually being dead. He's going to be dying very soon. Like, I have, like, six months to live. I have AIDS. What is you talking about? You got a whole wife and children at the house. What you talking about? And so... This man kissed him despite all that. He looked at him like, I don't care about all that. We started. So why wouldn't be we why shouldn't we be able to to end the way we started? So Pray Tell is getting his entire life a little bit. And I was just like, Lord. But before y'all, I just it's just so much that done popped off. Y'all, why he was at the house when the husband left. Tell me why the wife rolled up on Pray Tell and was like, look here. Because Pray Tell straight up asked her, why would you even be with him? You know his tea. I told you very intimate details about what he and I did. And he spoke with him about it earlier that day. And he was like, well, she understood. She understands that. And she makes me a better person. And all this other lies. All these other lies he done told himself, right? So he talking to the heifer. And the heifer was like, I trust him. I don't, I don't feel any type of way. And like... Girl, when he picked up the phone, you was looking at him like, uh, and who was that on the phone? And who was that on the phone? Like, your your eyes said that before your lips did. 
If you ain't worried about what he doing, why you got to look over his shoulder every time he do anything? I get the, I get them vibes that that's what this heifer do all day, every day is look over her shoulder, try to figure out what he got going on. And I'm tired. And I'm just like, why would you want to sit up there and get pregnant by somebody like that? And be in a marriage with somebody like that. The money ain't that great because he ain't running no mega church. So we ain't finna say it's for the money. That's what we not finna say. Um, but anyway, so she had the audacity to ask him, how do you please my husband? Can you tell me how I can please my husband? You do notice that between the baby and our other child, there is a five year gap. And that's because he would not lay with me. Girl, bye. Why is you in this situation? That man wouldn't even have sex with you because he's not into you. But you thought that you was going to be able to get everything you wanted out of life because of that. I can't. I, ain't, I can't. I was done. I was like, man, y'all, I'm telling my, I'm yelling at the TV like, ma'am, what you mean? This is for really staying in a marriage with a man who don't even want her. Like, ma'am, he don't want you. You ain't got nothing that she want. He had babies for you. He had beard babies for you. You are a beard and the children are beard children. I cannot. I cannot. So anyway, pray tell they didn't want to hear nothing about all this. And you know, he was just like, yeah, it's sad for you to be living in this this fantasy world. So anyway, later on after he get home from, you know, having his moment with Vernon, he is talking to his mama and, you know, they on decent terms despite how she felt earlier. And she was just like, you know, I knew one day that AIDS was going to get you as soon as you told me that. And so he was just like, that is not what it is. It's the church folks. It's y'all. Y'all condemning me and all this other stuff. So anyway... He was just like, you know, I just wish that you would just say that you are taking responsibility for what you've done and what you allow. And at first she didn't want to, but then it's like, she really was like, you know what? It is my fault. I knew what was going on and I chose not to stop it because I wanted to keep up these appearances. So, you know, that's basically what she said. She did apologize. It seemed like it was heartfelt. They embraced. He was crying. She was crying. And eventually she asked him would he go to church with her and all of this other stuff and he was just like i don't know about all that and they both laughed about it and so she was like look if if for nothing else you can go for the music no you know that you were one of the best singers you were the best singer and all this other stuff so he agreed to go um but within their moment she asked him you know do you believe in god and so he was like you talking about the one that you talking about that y'all believe in that live in the sky and all this other stuff. And he said, no, I believe in a God. And so she asked him, you know, well, since you, you know, how is it, how is he for you? How is your God? And so he was like, my God that lives within me, he loves me, he cares about me, and he is forgiving. And so she shook her head and was like, that's amazing. You know, basically was, you know, here for it because that's really what, you know, God, God is anyway. So anyway, they go to church together. Aunt Viv and uh, basically asking him to come up there and perform a solo. And he set it off with the solo. After all that was over, after the service, he met up with Jack and Harry's character. And she presented him with a power of attorney paperwork uh, situation. And, you know, she, you could tell she is so remorseful for how everything went down. Because she knew about all this stuff that was going on, but she didn't do anything. He had to tell her, it's not your fault. I don't have a problem with you. Like, she really is like, please forgive me and all this other stuff. He was just like, it's not your fault. I'm good. But yeah, she was just like, look, you know, when people die, people act a fool. Everybody think that they entitled to stuff. So if you give me power of attorney, you tell me who all you want to have a piece of whatever, I will come down there to New York and delegate the way that I know I should. So she was like, well, how do you want everything to go? He said that, you know, he does not want a parade because she was like, what you want a parade or something? And so he was like, actually, I want the opposite. I want to die peacefully at home. I don't want a parade. Um, I want to be cremated. I want to have several little heart shaped lockets that could be filled with, with my ashes to be given out to all of my friends. And he specifically said that there's going to be someone there by the name of Electra that is going to think that she is entitled to one of these lockets. But he is giving her special instructions to deny her this because he said that 
no matter where he is beyond the grave, he gonna be in the grave, and he and she is not gonna be able to rule nothing. And she, he just wants to be able to let Electra know that he's still running it from the grave because she thinks she can set it off and do what she want to do. So, well, the pastor knew that Praytel was gonna be leaving on a certain day at 5 p.m., catching the bus back home to New York, and he was expecting to see him kind of pull up, but he didn't. And he went on here, got on the bus and went home. So when he went home, he was back in Blanca's house, having a nice little family moment. Everybody was there. Blanca, uh, Poppy, um, Angel, Electra, and I think that's it. But yeah, uh, he did a nice prayer over the food. He made like this chicken noodle soup or something from scratch. That was his mama's recipe and all this other stuff. And they ate. And it was an amazing prayer. I was like, oh, it was a great episode to me. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this. Please like this video. Thumbs it up for me. Let's talk about it down in the comment section. I love this episode. Y'all have a good one.